Libraries are seen very much by a large number of people as just a place where you keep books. But you can see from behind me, from the things you're going to see today, that actually libraries have become much more than that. They really are about empowering people and supporting communities. This is about providing safe places that people can go, providing the resources they need for learning, for culture, for information, and also providing the resources in terms of skilled staff to support them to use those appropriately. So we run services and classes for individuals and for groups of individuals that range from the, you know, I'm afraid of a mouse, can you show me how to do it, the God IT type thing, right through to tonight in this library we're running a class on how to use eBay. And those kind of services are available in all of our libraries to a greater or lesser extent depending on the size of the library. I would use it to go on the internet and stuff, you know, to check things out, stuff like Google and stuff and all, you know. I don't have a PC at home, like, so I would come in here and get information on the internet and stuff. Good, great facilities here in Bangor itself, like, you know. Today we're in the Creative Lab in Bangor Carnegie Library and today we're running a little workshop. We have a small group of young people who, ha some of them have used GarageBand before, some of them have never sat down in front of it before. Well, I think there's so much stuff to do in these computers, there's like games and then there's stuff like for homeworks and then with all like the music and the games and oh, just all sound like that's really good. We want to get, to get people to the right information and to the right software packages and unless you have somebody guiding you along that route um, you've got a problem so libraries are very much uh, in the business of linking information on people. We've seen over the last two years, we've had a review of our libraries. And what we've seen is people value that social space, value a space where they can come in and interact with other people. But I think our library buildings are going to be used in different ways. They won't just be about storing books. They will be much more about that community participation. Zoom Text is a software package which enables blind and partially sighted people to access IT in their local library. I'm registered blind. I have an eye condition called retinitis pigmentosa which essentially means that I have tunnel vision and night blindness. So at RNAB we would use two packages for IT to enable people to access their internet, their email and such. Um, one would be JAWS, which is a speech package, and the other somebody with no sight whatsoever to um, use the computer in the, the way that a sighted person would. Um, the other package is ZoomText, and that's the one that I would use. They can modify, first of all, the cursor. You can make it a big green arrow, huge on the screen, which you can see there. You can magnify the size of your text, so everything on your screen remains exactly as it is if you're doing a Word document or you're on the internet. You can make everything bigger. I work on a program called Sensory Engagement Project, and we're working on models of excellence. Libraries and I have engaged with us on a partnership program to make the libraries as accessible as possible for people who are blind or partially sighted. Previous to this, people weren't able to use library computers at all. If, like me, you're a voracious reader, then what you actually need is access to a virtual library. And what we've got with Libraries NI is access through an app called Overdrive. It's available on an iPad, an iPhone, an iPod Touch, or your, your smartphone, your mobile phone, your Galaxy or whatever, and on your computer. Once you've chosen your book and downloaded it, it's actually very simple to use. It remembers where you are, so if you leave it in a hurry, it'll actually bookmark the place for you. And you can choose a selection for yourself, or you can have accounts in your family's names. So you get a variety of uses out of it. I think it's a great service for Derry. It's, it's used by a lot of people, so I think the library is important for the community. I'm from Barbados. I use the library to keep in touch with my family. The service the library is providing is great. Here's an example of an app that's about ch supporting children to learn Irish. Scammon. And The project I'm involved in, E2, is actually about taking libraries into this new generation of, of services and into a new way of working and supporting people to get the kind of skills that they need actually to deliver these kind of services. One of the challenges actually in a mobile library is that it isn't a large enough li library to have a number of computers. Well, this is perfect for that kind of environment. We can actually go out, have a couple of these under the desk, and if somebody comes in and wants to do their email, or just to check up their Facebook, wants to see what's happening, for example, in their local library, they can check what books are available before they make a journey into a library, or to request the books to be delivered in the mobile library the next time they come. All of that's available. The technology's there, and what Libraries MI is trying to do is make sure we bring that technology and bring our customers with us in the use of it.